I was working on this on Tuesday night and I replaced the SSD controller. Um, basically, it was randomly crashing and that didn't fix it. I replaced the encoder as well and that didn't fix it. But as you can see, it keeps crashing and resetting the animation. Eventually, it will load up. It'll probably actually load up this time. But when I connect a controller up, it won't actually play a game. But I needed some footage for this. I was reboarding it, but I was on a Discord voice chat. Um, and that messes with OBS. So, basically, I got persuaded. My arm got twisted into actually uh, working on this on stream instead. So, I just thought I'd hit live. I was going to do it just on Twitch, but then I thought, you know what, I might as well do it on YouTube as well. Let's see if I can get past it. There we go. All right, yeah, so that's got past the animation there. So, now it will actually... Now it'll actually boot and work. Yeah, so as you probably saw on the startup with that then, it was just randomly crashing on the um, on the intro, the welcome screen, and it wouldn't boot up. And when I actually, when I actually go to, oh no, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'll go away. Um, yeah, so when I actually load a game, I haven't got any games installed on here because I've tried reinstalling the software after I um, after I replaced the SSD controller and it didn't help it. So there's no games on here at the minute. But when it when it when it actually boots a game up, which I will download a game later on, but um, when it boots a game up, it just crashes with an error code. And if I reboot this now, it'll do the same again. So it's not a heat thing. It's not a thermal thing. Um, it's just very, very odd. New version, no, don't want to know. So if I pair this off now, just turn off, don't update. Uh, so it's actually, a new update's been released today, 7.20. Um, so I'm not going to update it, it's not really an issue. But now watch this. So now it's in 4K, you can tell it's in 4K because the writing's gone smaller, but look at that. I'm not touching it, by the way. But now it'll go through that cycle again. It's really weird. So, what I've done is for the past hour, I've been sat here. That camera. I've been sat here reboiling a full SSD, all six. And it's actually gone through. That, that was actually a little bit quicker. No, it's not. It's crashed again, look, see? Um, yeah, I've sat there and I've reboiled a chip in advance. I was going to film... The repair, but I wasn't going to film the reboarding because it's just too long. So, yeah, we're ready to go. But I promised I was going to do this at least on a video, so I'm going to do it. Your PS5 is stuck at this point too. Oh, cool. So hopefully this can help you out then. So what I've already done to this on the last stream is I've already replaced the SSD controller which is the uh, CXD 9062GG. So I've already replaced that, and I've already replaced the encoder. Neither of those fix the issue. So the only things that really are left to replace are going to be the actual SSD itself. Uh, well, I don't know if it is going to be that. Um, it's going to be either the SSD itself, the safe bridge, which is doubtful, or the RAM, and then if, if it's none of them, then it's got to be the APU. So just in case I do need to put this SSD back on, I'm going to need to mark these chips in case I do need to put this SSD back on. So what I've done with these ones is I've marked them all, so you can see that T1, T2, that one says T3, and then you got B4, B5, B6. So Basically, T indicates the APU side. Uh, no, sorry, T indicates the other side, so top of the board when it's in the housing. And B indicates um, the bottom of the board where the APU is. So, yeah, I've marked the chips so I know which order to put them on, on the board. Um, whether that makes a difference, I don't know. I genuinely don't have a clue whether it makes a difference or not. This is just a learning curve. It could fuck the entire board up, it could break it, but it doesn't matter because 
number one, the board is knackered anyway, and number two, I bought these boards primarily for learning and also for stripping down for parts for the store. So, yeah, if you're watching this back of the video, I am live streaming this, so don't forget to check out consolefix.co.uk for all of your repair needs. And if you need to buy any parts and supplies, you can buy them from me as well. Give me your money. Learning cost money and or boards. Yeah, but I won't actually lose money on these because, I mean, well, I can sell the parts off it. You know, there's loads of different components, so I'll pull off these for sale. Absolutely stacks. I don't lose money on these boards if I can't fix them. Uh, I actually lose money if I do fix them, technically. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, right, so let's mark these chips first. So, I'm going to use my grinding pen. Uh, I'll mark these as... A... One... A... And an A3. You will see them when it comes off, when you uh, take it off as well. And these ones I'll mark as B4. B5, and B6. That won't hurt the chips, by the way, because I'm literally just grinding away at the surface. Yeah, you will see this when it's, off, when it's uh, in plain view. Like, you can visibly see which chip is which by doing that. But I'm literally just grinding away at the surface. It's not going to hurt the chip. I did the same with these ones before I re-balled them. These are all pre-balled, ready to go. So let's go for... A1 first. Right. Right, 440 degrees Celsius. Let's grab some tweezers. Yeah, so I'll do number one first. I am gonna to have to reinstall this after every single one. It won't accept it. won't accept um, the software. So I'm gonna to have to reinstall it after every chip. So that means six different reinstallations on this, potentially, until we find well, until it either don't work or until we find the culprit chip. So I'll just wick this away, replace it with leaded solder and then wick it away. You've got to be careful because these pads are not the strongest. Should we see if it boots without this chip? Nah, it's not going to boot. It's not going to boot without that chip. Right, so we're on the APU side. So we're going to go for... B4 on this uh, bunch of chips. Not that it makes... I don't think it's going to make any difference because we're literally just installing one chip at a time. So, yeah. Not that it really makes a difference in terms of this one because we're installing them all, at the same, uh, all separately, but... Yeah, so we've got to rebuild the chip anyway. Uh, we've got to rebuild the uh, the SSD once we've done it anyway. Good stuff. There we go. Hey, Ellis gifted a sub on Twitch as well. Thank you, mate. You're a legend. It does help me keep streaming, mate. Yes, indeed. It definitely does. Right, yeah, so that was B4, so that was the right one for that particular thing, but 
Well, it doesn't really make a difference. Let's boot her up. Ow. It's hot. Ow. Imagine that. The board's hot after I've done some rework. But yeah, we're just jumping straight in the deep end here. Uh, that's another one of the replacement chips. Just jumping in the deep end. And by the way, if this does work, I do sell these chips on the store. Ha, <laughs> pre -balled. But they ain't cheap. Probably going to reduce the price though because I've got loads of them, so... Bang. Right, that's booting up. We really should be on uh, overhead cam, shouldn't we? Uh, face cam. So as we can see. Even though it's not going to actually boot. We'll go to the PlayStation logo, but then... Once it realises that some of the data is missing, it's going to jump into safe mode. I'm just screwing the heatsink down. So yeah, it's blue light to death at the minute because it needs to find the data. Need to move the chip up. No, they've got place for uh, BGA 153s on these as well. It's weird. Uh, yeah, so that's just gone solid blue light of death, uh, sorry, pulsing blue light of death, but, like I said, that's because of the, um, SSD not matching, but yeah, that, the reason that you've got some blank pads there is because there's, um, what do you call it, um, they've got room to put a BGA 153 on there. Okay, safe mode. There you go, white light, safe mode. Ugly cam. So, I'm just going to hook up a controller. Also, I need the firmware as well, which I've got on USB already. Something went wrong. Your console needs to be reset to factory defaults. Actually, we might not need to. Um, we might not need to use the USB. Could be wrong there. Realise that after I said it. It's all good, mate. Right. Okay. Yeah. So reset PS5. Yeah, we do need the USB. So 7.01, which is on the file on the USB at the minute. So I'm going to let that be installed. There we go. Let's let that run through. I've already converted this board to digital, by the way. So that's just booting back in. Um, going to the next stage of the uh, reinstallation. There we go. So I'm just let that run through. <laughs> Travis did it indeed. The cup don't lie. The cup don't lie. Travis broke this PS5. Do, 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 Yep, don't forget to hit the like. Do I, do I sleep at all? No. <laughs> nope. Where is Travis? Uh, Travis is just busy, mate. Um, he's got a new job, so I spoke to him yesterday. He's good. He's doing well. Got a new job, and, uh, yeah, he's a good guy. He's working hard. Right. How's it looking? Nope, that was a jitter. Oh, hang on. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nearly had me there. It nearly got it. It was so close. It's still doing the same thing. We're swapping the BIOS chip from a digital to a dashboard. Work the same as flashing the chip. You can swap from a disk to digital, but you can't swap from digital to disk. 
Uh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah, you can swap from a digital board, so you can turn a disc edition into a digital edition, but you can't turn a disc edi digital edition into a disc edition. Um, and yes, it would. So if you take one from a donor board, or I do sell, if you haven't got any, I do sell um, BIOS chips from digital edition donor boards. You can tell when they're a digital edition because I've got these connectors removed, that one and that one. I actually put these back on here after I did the video because I was doing some research on trying to go the other way. But yeah, you can take one from a digital board and put it straight onto a disc edition and it will update like a disc edition. You can also take one if you've got the matching daughter board. So if you've got a complete unit, complete disc edition unit that you can't fix, you can take the BIOS chip from that board and the disc drive, put the connectors on. Uh, so transfer the connectors from the disc edition to the digital edition. Sorry, not no. Sorry, not put the connectors on. So you can put you can put that BIOS chip plus the disc drive onto another disc edition board, and it'll go through the update. But it won't play a disc once it goes through the update. It will accept the update, but it won't play a disc. Hope that made sense. Right on to number two. Yeah, it enables updates. You just don't accept the um, disc. I'm sure eventually an exploit will come out to the point where you can actually remarry it as well. I'm sure eventually that will be a thing. Right, so there's A2, removed. By the way, I was contemplating this afternoon, I had a, a little brainwave. It hurt my head a bit, but I had a little brainwave and I thought, should we start a weekly podcast? Like me, and then like get some regular other text to do it with me and then get some random guests on every now and again. I'm actually going to see um, another repair shop tomorrow. Uh, someone ordered something off eBay on me, from me, from a local repair shop, so I said, well, I'm going to be in Wolverhampton City Centre tomorrow morning, well, tomorrow lunchtime, so do you want me to drop you off in person? And when I get there, I'm going to discuss because they, they they're run by an insurance company. So I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to them and see if they'll be willing to set up some sort of a business to business contract. You never know. I really don't think it makes a blind bit of difference on these where uh, which order they go in. Not when you're replacing them one at a time, anyway. Um, I am going to do another test where I replace all six at once as well. Looks smaller. Um, no, it's because the these chips that I'm putting on, the, the original chips off the PS5 are BGA132, um, whereas they do have space for BGA153, so they've got like um, or 152, whatever the head it is, I don't know, however many pads it is, but yeah, they've got space for a bigger chip, I don't know whether Sony did that in case of, um, you know, not having, uh, not being able to find the chips and stuff, I don't know, but they have got space for a different chip. Right, test number two of six. I'm gonna make money. Nah, I'm only messing, mate. I'm just, I'm just literally doing this just to try and figure out more answers. Yeah, this isn't gonna boot up, but you know, it was worth a shot. I was looking, I was looking for that screwdriver a bit earlier, so I could complete my set. Yeah, it's not gonna boot up. Let's boot it into safe mode. Research and dev. Yeah, that's it, mate. Just research and development. Uh, which is why I buy so many boards and stuff as well. Right, booting into safe mode now. Connect the controller, blah, blah, blah. Uh, might help if I plugged in the antennas. <sighs> Good shit. Right, that should be reinstalled now. Okay, are you going to boot up this time? Nope, that was a jitter. Yep, I had a jitter, I saw it. Got a very slight jitter. 
to be honest, I've got a feeling this isn't the RAM at all. I've got uh, sorry, the SSD at all. I've got a feeling it's something to do with the RAM. I'll do two. Um, I'll do I'll do this last one A3, and then I'll do one more on the other side. So I'll do two, and then I'll do another two afterwards. That's just flux on there, by the way. It's not liquid. Yeah, let's do two, and then I'll do two on the other side. Yeah, so can you see these extra pads here? On each side. It'll be the last chip you change. Well, yeah, because if it's if it was the last, if it wasn't the last chip I changed, if it was one before that, then technically I'm just wasting time by changing extra chips. <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to be. I don't want to be on this all night. I wasn't intending on streaming tonight. Um, plus, I have got school runs in the morning. Like, Tuesday mornings, I just suffer it, but... Yeah, I've actually got quite a bit of stuff to do tomorrow. So... I don't really want to spend all night on it, if I can help it. Yeah, a lot of people have got work in the morning as well. And, you know, for some of the people that are in the UK, it's... It's quite late and I don't want to keep them, so. But obviously, this is anticipated as well because I was working on it on Tuesday, so. Yeah, it's one of them. All right, so I'll just get rid of that. I am actually putting these on in order. But. It's not necessary. Just melt this flux a little bit. I'm not actually flowing the chip here, I'm just melting the flux. Just so I can move the chip freely. No worries, the Americans are there. <laughs> no work till Sunday, nice. Right, let's replace one more on this side. It's just quicker doing it this way. I know we're not going to know exactly which chip it was that was causing it, but does that really matter? Because it's going to be different on everyone's machine, so you're going to have to just pretty much guess. Uh, but if it is this what causes it, you know, if it is actually the SSD, um, you'd still technically need to buy only buy one or two because, well, if you're capable of reboarding them yourself, that is, then technically you'd only need to buy one or two because... You know, if it didn't fix your issue, you just replace, you just put that one back, right, like onto another part of the board, I guess. Um, but then again, or you just take it off and redo it, like put the original back on if it didn't fix it. Problem is, is knowing which one it is, that's the issue that people are going to have. I suppose if I find out. Like let's say for example it's the last two, one of the last two, then I'll put them on another board and I'll take diode readings of all of the surrounding components and try and make comparisons um, and try and figure out a way to figure out exactly what chip it is. Could they all need changing? Potentially, yeah. You know, it could it could be that they're suffering from some sort of you know bit rot or something like that. I don't know. Um, there is the potential that all six could need replacing. We don't know. Maneuver that into place. We'll do this one, and then if you still don't fix it, then we've got two more that we can replace. I suppose you might need to end up doing this with an oscilloscope if you wanted to figure out exactly which one it was. You know, maybe try and get a baseline reading off uh, a good board as it's booting up, and then try and make comparisons with an oscilloscope because you can visualize it then as well. Right, so we've replaced two more. Can you even buy these chips new? Not as far as I know. Last time I looked, you couldn't. Uh, I do sell them on my store. Like, if people want to buy these chips, I will re them and sell them to people. Right, I may as well boot straight into safe mode. Because I know it's not going to boot up, because obviously some of the data is missing. 
But yeah, as far as I know, you cannot buy these chips new. Not at the minute. You will be able to, but at the minute, I don't think so. Uh, I actually think this fault is most likely RAM. If the SSD data were cooked, it wouldn't get through loading the OS, but if the RAM was faulty, it may cycle the chips it uses on every boot. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, I thought RAM myself, you know, from the get-go, I thought RAM, but... Um, yeah, it's just... It's difficult to say, isn't it? You know, we, we're not going to know for sure unless we try everything. And it's quicker to replace the SSD than it is to replace the RAM. Well, actually, uh, with the reinstallations, probably not. All right, let's boot it into safe mode. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've gone too far. Oh, oh no. Oh shit. Oh shit. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily fail the update if it was RAM. PS5 killer. It's alright, we could just reboot one chip and put it back. I feel a reflow coming on. Um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm going to reflow both these chips and if not then I'll put those, I'll put the last chip I replaced back. Um, so the last chip I replaced was on the back here. Um, this one here. Um, this is why I've marked them. So I'll just put one back. Uh, so I'll put B4 back, which is this chip here. Reball that, put it back. Try and boot it again. So it's not the end of the world. Might have just not had enough flux there. Yeah, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't start up with two chips being changed at once. So I'll try it with a reflow just to make sure the chips have sat down properly. I'll, re I'll reflow that one. Let that settle before I mess any more. Before I even put it down because I don't want to squeeze the chip or anything like that. And then there's this one. Which I've just put on. Uh, let's go under the scope for this because I can see a little bit of a wonky resist that. Oh, no it's not actually, it's fine. So I just want to make sure the chip's sat down properly. I thought that resistor was wonky. Yeah, this one didn't sit down properly. I don't think that one sat down properly. It didn't quite feel right. The thing is, you just never know with BGA. Even if it springs back and works absolutely fine, you just never know. Right, let's not worry about the uh, heatsink for now. The first time I nudged that chip, then it didn't spring straight back. No, it's still dead. Right, well, I'm going to put that chip back on. I'm going to reball that quickly and put that back on. Yeah, it'll take like five minutes to reball this. There we go. I might reflow the SSD controller at the same time because there is a chance that it could have floated the SSD controller because that is lead free, uh, that is uh, leaded solder on the SSD controller. So I could reflow that before I actually put this chip on. But while I've got this chip here now, I'm going to reball it. All right, just add a little bit of flux. Tad of flux, and then I'm going to grab my stencil. Are we in focus there? Yes, we are. So, BGA 132. 
But I haven't got a jig for this particular chip, so... Right. Stop it. Yeah, so I'm just going to put one back on because I want to make sure that that's not the cause. I mean, if we kill it, we can always carry on with it tomorrow. Like I said, this is just a quick stream, like hour, hour and a half. I'm not going to waste too much time on it tonight. And if we do kill it, then, you know, this board was unusable anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Oi, I'm jumping off your pads. Right, let's flow that down. Ah, damn it. That wasn't quite solidified. Should be okay, but... Yeah, they generally reform when that happens. I've got one that's about to merge up in this corner here. So I've got to wait for it to solidify so I can move it. Get off of my property. Right, let me grab this board back. I see trees are green. Red roses too. I see a soldier board or two. There we go. Phil fixed it till he broke it. Yeah. This is the original chip going back on for this side of the board. I really hope you don't have to rebuild this bit by bit. Like chip by chip. There we go. Really hope this turns on. No. Wow, what the hell? Well, you know, like me, bro. Or is it too hot? Is it like the SSD chip's too hot? Let's let it cool down. Actually, we've got a little bit of liquid metal there, um, which has spilt out. So I might, have, I might have managed to replace the whole three chips before I completely killed it. <laughs> Which is going to suck. No, it's not liquid metal. Or at least not on that side. Um, we might have killed it. Let's just give the SSD controller a reflow. Well, 
I'm going to check the um, APU, make sure we've got no liquid metal, but if not, then let's just give the SSD a reflow. See, so we have got liquid metal. Oh, hang on. Uh, has that managed to find its way under? I mean, this board's been off that many times. It really wouldn't surprise me. Like, well, it's been out of the housing that many times. But then at the same time, it shouldn't find its way under that gasket. No. It's fine. It's not found its way under the gasket. Let's just reflow this chip real quick. The one that I've just put back on. Because it was at least attempting to turn on before I put this chip back on. Let's just make sure it's not that. That was isopropyl alcohol, what was spluttering out. If that don't sort it, I'll try reflowing that SSD controller because that has been replaced and it could have floated it. And if not, then I don't know. If not, then we'll pick it up tomorrow. Well, I'll carry on with it tomorrow. Nope. No, it's gone to a single beep. Right, let's try reflowing that SSD controller. Uh, that chip wasn't installed properly, by the way, because if it was, then it wouldn't have um, it wouldn't have changed the behaviour, and it has. It's just changed it. So, oh, I've knocked my balls over as well. Oh, come on! Just knocked my solder balls on the on the side as well. Yay! Right, yeah, let's give this SSD controller a reflow. Make sure we haven't floated that in the process of doing any rework. This is the only area we've been working around, so... Yeah. It takes a while to reflow this chip. It is a pretty big chip. Reflow them all. Let's see if it boots now. Let's wait for it to settle. Make sure that it's cooled down fully. Having to do a firmware update for your toilet. <laughs> That's a bit shit. <laughs> oh, it's died. It's killed it. No! I managed to do three before it before it killed it. No, two technically. Oh, you suck! You freaking suck! Right, okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, it's just a quick, just a quick, just a quick stream. Take care, everyone. Good night.